Okay. Is it like wallpapers with with my logo or what? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I just pressed the record button, and uh, we were talking a bit about what is, uh, or the question was asked, what is physical or what is uh, digital merchandise? So I think that that could be potentially a lot of different things. Um, you know, it could be like skins for like a some sort of game. I mean, I don't play oh, like yeah, any okay. of those games, but that could certainly be um, be something. Um, I mean, I know that like in the uh, the football games, the soccer games, um, you can like customize your uh, team's jerseys and stuff. And so what a lot of people do is like this jersey that I'm wearing now, like they'll actually make like a digital like representation of that jersey not like you know this is like a you know a fourth division team in minneapolis um they're not you know a mls team um and uh so like they're not the ones producing it's like fans that are doing it and stuff in that case but um you could see the situation where like um you know at least a big name or if you're just like interested in computer graphics maybe like you know, or maybe, maybe it wouldn't be like, it could be something like a rock band type game, but maybe like the Sims again, I don't, I wish Sam was here um, because he, he's like a big Sims player. Um, and I don't know what the like in game stuff is like for that, but also could be like um, apps. Um, I mean, I think most of the like music apps are free, um, but there might be some sort of like, you know, exclusive content in the app or something, um, you know, and then there's, um all sorts of like vr stuff um potentially you know like could be like live concerts and um things of that nature um but also just like rather than streaming just like downloading you know the cd or download do downloading an album or tracks or something i think that's you know that's something that um depending on where you're downloading from you you could own um you know that's not always the case if it's like with whatever the hell itunes is called these days um but you know so, some places like you do just like you have a download and it's just like your mp3 now and you know do with it as you wish more or less so um you were pointing i think this was before um we were on camera to your your hat and your shirt as far as merchandise um Caleb, do you want to talk to us about that? Oh yeah, I mean, when I go to shows, I'm a sucker for the merchandise. So like I, I usually this is a spiritualized shirt, and then the the hat. I'm trying to remember the band name. I'm embarrassed. I can't remember the band, but I like the hat. And uh, I the, another one that I found is like a gift bags or or bags that hold your vinyl records, right? Those are I see those a lot at shows and. And then I, I bought one time a, a band. DJ that, bag, I think they call those. A what? DJ bag. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, another thing I've gotten that shows was a pair of drummer pants. They were just sweatpants that had been, and they put their band logo on it. But they made for good pajamas. And uh, what else? Oh, no. Yeah, I kind of always try and make a point of buying merch at shows because my understanding like of the economics of money. touring, like right. they make their money from the merch, right? Like and what they, they get for playing is kind of enough to get them to the next town, but like they actually make their profit by selling merch. So much better to buy it directly from them. And that way, it, you know, it doesn't get handled by anybody else. There's no middlemen. You just literally put cash in the band member's hand and there you go. I will talk about like, I get frustrated sometimes because they have um, they'll have t-shirts for people who are like a small but they don't have any t-shirts for grown men which I always feel like that depends on where they're at in the tour like I feel like yeah. the selection of women's shirts is sometimes all over the place and just I, I don't know it's weird it's a lot of times got, it's not uncommon to find a shirt that you like but they don't have it in your size so you get a different one or whatever yeah, I can't get a different one. It's like if they don't have two XL, I'm I'm pretty. It's very doubtful they'll have three. Right. So. So. Here in Kazakhstan, nobody nobody is cares about merch. Nobody cares about merch. Yeah, if you go into a live show, 
there is nowhere to buy merch. Oh. So do they just get paid by the venue then? <laughs> if or do they so, just not no. Get paid? No, no, for but free. Everything for free. Oh. Everything for free. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> for bands. Uh, yeah. So they're just out there for the love of it. I have my own stickers. That's awesome. Uh, that's that's only merch I have. If you learn to <laughs> silk screen, you could make a shirt, and then you'll be starting a revolution over there in merchandise <laughs> sales. Could be a pioneer. Yeah, a pioneer, right? Do you, do you have a link no, to your no stickers, only... Victor? Can we buy your stickers online? No, it's it's only here in Elmati. I was gonna say, how do I get a Victor sticker from Kazakhstan to to here? Seriously, <laughs> slap it you on should, the computer. Uh, you should talk to Mike. I know we've got we've got some. I mean, the CDs for sure. Um, although I think those are direct. Direct. Mike changed those back from our store to um, direct from a uh, Konami or whatever the CD uh, place I put is. A Victor I put a Victor sticker on my car. Seriously, yeah. I Man. put them every everywhere where, where I'm going. <laughs> it's, it's literally whole cities of my stickers. <laughs> uh, That's great. We have a um, a few, well, a couple artists that are uh, on our. We have some like stuff that you know, is label specific, but also we've got some Chuck Mosley stuff and some Ronaldo, Ronaldo and the Loaf stuff on the, um, on the Block Sonic store. I have a, uh, a canvas, I don't know how big it is, $35, can't be that big. 12 by 12 canvas. Looks nice enough. I tried to get Mike to come, but uh, well, I mean, I didn't try that hard, but I was like, hey, this one would be a good one for you to attempt. <laughs> but uh, by 12 canvas, like 12 inches or feet? Yeah, 12 inches. Oh, okay, I was like, man, that's massive, 12 feet. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I haven't opened, uh, oh man, it's like now I gotta turn my, turn off my uh, background because you guys can't, aren't gonna be able to see the, uh, the uh well it looks like if you're holding it in front of your shirt we can see it well maybe, maybe but there's some detail that uh um, oh, okay yeah it's uh virtual background none so um so this uh one thing i hadn't opened it yet because i wanted people to see the um the record store day um, oh, sure. sticker. Days and so uh, it was supposed to be um, in April, April 18th, but that didn't happen. So uh, I don't actually know what the, there's like three different record store days. The, the idea being that like that will help space people out, you know, if you're interested in a specific item, um, then, you know, we'll just keep people out. Um, I don't know if that strategy is going to work, but uh, that's part of it. Um, I guess I could have opened one of these and not the other because they both have the sticker, but um, I don't know what this uh, little thing on the uh, on the side, it's got it's a little art on the inside. <laughs> uh, Obi? Is that an Obi sleeve? I guess. <clears throat> And I know this is, I want, I don't know, Victor may have seen this, but um, we have on the uh, the back, not of the like the hard cover, but of, I, I recognize side. some of that album art. That's some fake yeah, detective stuff. I, I saw <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a QA, QR code. I didn't, I didn't even realize that. Um, so yeah, there's a QR code where you can go and download. Uh, um, yeah. So that one's a free digital That's download. Cool. Yeah, um, and then uh, yeah, so it lists on here these top top three 
on this side, those are all like CDs you can purchase. So those are all um, Creative Commons musicians. Um, these these two are both by the silent partner. Silent partner is Gregory, who came to the um in he was talking the week that we did sampling. Is that the week that you were out, Ben? Uh I he was on the call for maybe like five, ten minutes while I was on the call and then I had to drop. Okay. Um oh yeah, he showed up. And then these these two are there's a this is a tape and then um a seven inch. Stuff. But uh but yeah, so we're trying to get, you know, for some promo on these for um, for uh, the Creative Commons musicians, and then um, really kind of stuck in there a bit. <laughs> and then uh, I guess we go with side one first. Nice color. Yeah, yeah, side two looks pretty similar. <laughs> and then I don't think that I showed the um, the backer. Actually, this is the front of the sleeve there. So, and then uh, the other one, um, Ben is the th that's the awesome Dre. Um, but the other one yep. is a Chuck Mosley. Um, I don't actually know what the extended, this is an extended edition. I don't know what that, what the extended stuff is off the top of my head. Um, I should probably know that, but I don't. <laughs> Pop that back in there. So. Um, yeah, merch is definitely something that like t-shirts and stuff, something that we want to do more of in the, uh, in the future. Okay. I have some blah, blah, blah. Also about t-shirts, one of my friend, friends who is a director of Best Place, he said that it's so stupid to wear merch with your own logo on it. Is it stupid? It depends who you are, I think. I don't think it's I think stupid. if you're in Metallica, it's maybe stupid because yeah. everybody knows who Metallica is. But if you have a little thing you're trying to promote, I think it's a good idea. You should be proud of the stuff that you do. I think your manager should wear the, your stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if your manager's not going to wear your stuff, what's the point even? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, different color scheme on this one. Same inside... Uh, or outside sleeve rather. I don't know if the uh, the back has the same albums on it or not. Yeah, so the uh, we got the same the same promo stuff on the back. Is that the so, Chuck Mosley one? So Sorry, the, I didn't yeah, this the... yeah this yeah this is the Chuck Mosley. So here's the the front of the. So there's there's Chuck there. Um, That's cool. Okay, then, uh, so can we digress for a minute, Doug? Sure since you bring up Chuck Mosley and since yeah. this is actually music related. When you think Chuck Mosley, do you think Bad Brains or do you think Faith No More? Uh, I mean, I, I... Bad Brains. Okay, see, and apparently everybody thinks Bad Brains and I think Faith No More. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's immediately where my mind goes. Yeah, so I... Yet, I'm... When you first mentioned Chuck Mosley and you mentioned Bad Brains, it took me a second to even remember that that was a thing. <laughs> anyway... Yeah, that says something more about my age or my background or something, but <laughs> or maybe oh, we, my age. We all we also dude, have he was these, a dude uh, in Faith No More before Mike Patton. Yeah, these uh, digital downloads in both of them. I didn't mention that on the. Uh, on oh, the, what's the awesome what's Dre the slogan, one. Caleb? I like anything with slogans on it. I'm actually wearing merch, band. even though it's maybe not obvious. Uh, which what band are you wearing today? Uh, health. health. So. They were gonna name their first album this, and they decided not to for some reason. But that's actually the URL for their website. Oh wow! And if you Google that phrase, it takes you to their website, and it's completely unrelated to like all of their work. But I went to a show; they were in St. Paul, and it was very cool. I like being able to hand money like directly to somebody in the band. Me especially too. If I really like the band, so like I bought a couple shirts from the bass player in the band in between like the opening act sets and talk to him for a second. And like, that was, I mean, that 
the show was great regardless, but that kind of made the whole experience for me to just be like, hey, man, like, I like what you're doing. Like, here's money, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, you're part That's... of something that I appreciate, something that has a lot of meaning to me, and it's pretty rare to just be able to straight up hand somebody like that cash. I'm always surprised, like, by uh, what performers are willing to go out and do that after the show or before the show. It's always impressed right. me. Yeah, There's so I've met a lot of fan I, members that way, just really briefly, you know, to feel like, hey, you know, I'm a fan. I appreciate your stuff. Thanks for coming. I've, I've went to some shows that are small venues. They'll do that. But I get really impressed when it's a really large venue and they're doing that because they don't have to do that at that level, you know, and right. it just blows me away. I, I went to shows like that and it blows me away when they're still out there talking to people, talking to their fans and, and uh, signing autographs and selling stuff. It's a really cool thing to yeah. see. I mean, this is a band I'm loving uh, called uh, Divide and Dissolve. And then I bought this last year and then, then, uh, Oh, that's bad. Hey, destroy white supremacy. <laughs> yeah. and they, they're from Australia, and they also have shirts that say, like, uh, stop colonial something. I can't remember the exact quote, but I thought I think it's relevant. So, And then uh, here's in the, some more merch. It's got autographed by Thurston Moore. Nice. Can I make another digression? Yeah. Speaking of Thurston Moore, so I don't yeah. really care about celebrity couples because that's just not my thing. But Kirsten Moore, or Thurston Moore and Kim Gordon getting divorced was like that one kind of hurt me a little bit. Yeah, I heard everyone. I think all their fans were like, "Oh, oh." Yeah, and like <laughs> apparently he'd been cheating on her for a super long time and all that right. stuff. So I'm I'm Team Kim now. Yeah, so, me too. I I feel like another thing is that uh, I kind of feel like when you're torn in a band, maybe you shouldn't be married to who you're in a band with. It's like you don't want to marry someone you work with. It just seems like a bad idea. To, Part know. of me was like I was sort of shocked that they'd been able to make it work for decades. Right, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's pretty crazy. I also don't think there's any young Sonic Youth fans. They're all like... <laughs> They're all our age at a minimum. Well, the younger the younger people are kind of tired of hearing about them. It's like when I was growing up hearing about uh, the Beatles. Oh, I'm so sick of that. But but my parents would would talk about like uh, the Leonard Skinner or something like right. that. You know, it's like man. Yeah, but the difference between Leonard Skinner and Sonic Youth is Sonic Youth are good. Right. Well, yeah. If you're but if you're in your you know sixties. You might feel differently. <laughs> I mean, you'd be wrong, but yeah, you're probably right. You feel differently. <laughs> so there are a lot so, of cool albums that came out this week. I'm gonna yeah. show you the the color on the Chuck Mosley one. That's beautiful. One as well. yeah. wow. I love that. That's beautiful color. Yeah, I think our our sort of uh our I mean, especially for the record store day releases, it's like. If you're not going to do something that like looks good, like, you know, people can, if they want to listen to stuff, they can just get a digital <laughs> listen, you know, you want something that right. like, you know, looks nice. So, um, yeah. I used to have, I, I guess I should, uh, I think I wore my free music archive shirt one time. Um, I used to have more fan merch, but it's like I've gone. I, I know it's like I don't know if I if I had like gotten bought t-shirts and stuff from like everybody that I interviewed when I was on Music Management, then uh, mm -hmm. I'd be out of money. So <laughs> yeah, that is a problem. You'd have to talk to the other Ramsey to f find out about our problems with that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, speaking of merch and speaking of health, apparently they're selling masks. Yeah, that's... I just I just posted an Instagram link and the dude in the mask is actually the bass player, the guy I bought the t-shirts from. Oh, bands are having masks? 
was for sale. That's yeah, awesome. I, I didn't. I kind of, you know, now that people are having to cancel tours, like yeah. one of those outlets for selling merch has kind of been taken away. So. Yeah, Minneapolis City did that um, too. I mean, the same thing with them. You know, like their season got canceled, so uh, yeah, they kind of got to sell some stuff. Uh, I don't see anything on the main page. Oh you dang, know, their like masks are sold page. out. Good for them. Good. Their masks sold out. That's all. Awesome. Yeah, I would have totally bought a mask. Seriously. So there's a shirt button. Let's see if I'm in the right spot. Okay, yeah, I see strange days, yeah. And this uh cyborg esque <laughs> face <laughs> that uh th it's like a 3d model there's not on the one i'm looking at it's not actually a person oh yeah i see that too i'm looking at their store right now so where where was the one where uh the bassist is uh wearing the mask uh the instagram link oh, oh yeah did i click on the wrong thing oh, they're sure. right next to each other ah there you go. Yeah, I remember I posted that on Facebook, like not not them, but like bands doing that like two months ago. But I don't remember like who, like what what bands were or what music. Oh my god, they started a hotline where you can call and talk to people in the band. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh wow. A band hotline? That's interesting. Yeah, I'll send All a right. link. I mean, if I know some sitting bands around that I would drive them crazy calling in. <laughs> that's sort of an amazing shirt. That's the same bass player, dude. That's the guy I bought the t-shirt from. That's hilarious. Man, they've gone all in on being online. Holy shit. Well, I mean... <laughs> that's where we're at now. Yeah, I mean... Man, Ban should start doing I, I shows on private Zoom and you could pay to... My most crazy merch is from Massive Attack. Oh, Victor, they, they have a VK page. I know What's it's guitar the, music, so you won't like it, but you should check them out because yeah. they're good. What, a DNA they spray? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would just post a link. I don't know what is what, what is will, this spray will be if you insert this DNA in your blood. <laughs> I guess I can go back to the uh, hmm. Minneapolis skyline here. If we weren't closed for, um, I know it's not much of a skyline. I guess my head is in the way of the actual skyline. And you can see that There's I just reflections ripped in the this water off. are pretty cool. Yeah, I just ripped this from somebody's page, so it's watermarked. But I, can, I don't know that you can. I, is it, it might be backwards. So, so maybe you guys can read it. I can't read it. Um, Image kind. Okay. Yeah, you can read yeah. it, but it's it's backwards on the on the zoom like. Thing. So this is the uh, this is the Stone Arch Bridge for um, the well you can't see where my mouse is so I'll point so this well it's a, it's the only bridge in the picture so you know right <laughs> so if you ever hear people talk about the Stone Arch Bridge that's a pedestrian bridge that's often too crowded to get oh my across. god they're selling that massive attack thing is crazy Victor yeah. <laughs> What is, I don't understand, what is it, like hairspray, or what is the spray? No, it's something no, it's that they like, coated their album like in the DNA paint. strands in a bottle, so you spray can spray paint. their album. Yeah. That's weird. I don't even know what that really <laughs> means. <laughs> My gosh. It kind yeah, of scares me. I want to know more about where this DNA came from. <laughs> Jeez. It could have been synthesized in a lab. Well, or hairs of Robert Delnay. Someone just pissed in an aerosol <laughs> can. I don't know. 
Also, they have some mobile app, but it's for, for iOS. So, fans with Android, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the uh, the beginning of that. I just heard an iOS Android. only app, so no oh, Android. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been thinking a lot about. Uh, I've been thinking about this guy a lot lately. Like Lauren, do you guys know Lauren Connors? No. I feel like you've I mentioned don't. her before. Yeah. Him. Him? Yeah, he came Something. Up with this like album that album looks familiar. Is that new? Or am I just it's new. It's off new. It just came in. It's got this kind of retro family vineyard label on it. Beautiful Dreamer by Lauren Connor. That looks like it would sound like Nick Drake. 10 inch. Uh, no, it sounds like hmm. it's experimental music, obviously. He, but it, I don't know, man. He's he's got a lot of albums. He's super prolific, very prolific guy. I'm always impressed with these guys that very few people have heard about, but they have like, you know, a thousand albums or something out there. It's kind yes. of wild. Yes, there's a band that I've been listening to recently that has, they've been around for like eight years and they have like 22 albums or something. Right. <laughs> like how? <laughs> Do an album like every three or four months? There is a trip hop musician called uh, Mr. Moots. He has 88 albums. <laughs> uh, are they actually albums or are they just like... Yeah, releases? albums. Okay. With... 15 or 20 tracks wow. in each. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. June. He came out with, I bought this one and then he sent me this and this. So I was just. Did you get like was, extra merch? Yes, it's like more more records than I was expecting. So that was cool. Well, if there's one thing you're short on, it's definitely vinyl, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, clearly <laughs> what I'm short on is vinyl. Yeah, that's funny. We should ask your wife about that. I'm sure she's got some feelings. Yeah, that would be a funny thing to just talk to her about anything, really. She's, oh, man. She's, I'm, she's got to be a patient woman. That's all I can think. Mindy, they think you're a patient woman. They're, you're right. She is. I know but, I'm right. Yeah. But she's also a funny person. She's funny. I see the racket here behind you, and I think there's a wife that puts up with some shit. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. They see, he said, I see the rack behind you, and, I, and this is a wife that puts up with some shit. <laughs> She's just shaking her head and rolling her eyes. <laughs> oh, she agrees with me, though, doesn't she? <laughs> yes, she does, yeah. That was supposed to be temporary. Oh, it, it, she said, that was going to be temporary. That's yeah, she said. fuck, yeah, no way. <laughs> I was temporary 10 years ago. <laughs> it's temporary like our child is. <laughs> yeah, like eventually you'll move to another house and all that stuff will come with you. That's what, that's what temporary means. 18 years, the, the gear moves out. <laughs> It'll just move to his room. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so that's just so you can get new stuff. I know how that game is played. Oh, wow. Are you married? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so you do know how the game is played. <laughs> I'm not the one with the stuff, though. Oh, oh no? You, she is? Oh, I'm sitting in her sewing room. Oh, wow. She's that sewing room. My wife has, she learned how to knit a few weeks ago. And she's she's knitting all this by next year, I'm going to have nothing but like knitted outfits. I'm going to look yeah. like a reggae dude or something. Caleb's going to be the scarf king. Scarf king, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she made a beautiful scarf. 
She's got some crazy yarn to knit. It's like a multicolored yarn. So when she's knitting, oh this yeah, scarf my my is... mom, my aunt, my wife are all knitters, so I know how that game's played too. There's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... My aunt spins her own yarn from wool. That's how into it she is. Whoa, Mindy, he just went up to you. His aunt spins her own yarn from wool. She has yeah, a my spinning wife wheel. said that's not happening for her. She so. has a spinning wheel, for real. Like, you uh, can't make this up. She has a spinning that's, wheel? Yeah. That's it's crazy. Wild. Does she raise the sheep? No. She, no. She could, though. She lives in Iowa, and they have a farm. He said they live in Iowa on a farm. She could, but she doesn't. She's like retirement age, and I think the sheep thing is maybe just too... Too much for her? That, that ship has sailed. That sounds like way too much work to me. I mean, spinning the wheel, spinning the wool out uh, to yarn sounds like too much for me. Heck, knitting like the, was too much for me. I, I don't feel like do every that. hobby, you're going to find somebody that's way more into the hobby than you are. Oh, and sure. generally, it's just that they have more money, but like, I don't know. It's... Oh man, I, I play guitar and I'm like, I'm friends with a bunch of these guys that are building guitars. Because right, playing, it's like how, playing how? guitar wasn't enough. They had to build the guitar. <laughs> right. Wild. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I told them I had to draw the line here because I I just I only have so much time and only so much of me to go around. I can't I can't build. I just a guitar. feel like the base level of woodworking skills you would need to build your own guitar is like that alone is substantial. I kind of feel like I could do it, but I don't want to, I don't have the time. I just don't have the time. In high school, a friend of mine, his dad um, made their own, he made violins. Wow. And it, it was, they were good. Like he sold them to people that did like community orchestra stuff and stuff like that. So they were like concert quality violins, but he only knew how to play one song on the violin <laughs> so that he could test it. I yeah I don't know I, that, remember, like, I, don't, I don't song, even know what this I don't even know what the song is I can just hear it in my head even and today, that song like, was one of the Paganini caprices right no it was something oh, okay. pretty basic but I think it was more to make sure that he could actually tune the thing before he was tried it to sell it. <laughs> it was something pretty I, like I recognized it but I don't know that much about classical yeah. music so if you guys listen to the um, the there's a comedian that does a um, a bit about Pachelbel. It's hilarious. Oh, I haven't heard that. I would love to hear that. Yeah. Um, so I'll drop the link in the. Uh, sure. So I didn't catch his name. Oh man, I was Rob, dying this week listening to Dimitri Martin. I don't know who that is. You don't know but Dimitri Martin. Martin? I'm terrible with names, so. Oh, good for you, man. You've got some funny stuff to watch. He's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, man, I would love it if I... The Martin was... fan is, like, the least surprising thing about you, Caleb. That seems, like, right. Just totally matches that kind of dry sense of humor. Oh, that's funny. Like, I... I, I, I'd love to meet you, Martin. I think he's so freaking funny. It's... Yeah, I don't. I don't actually recognize him, even after looking looking at the name um kills me but uh I'll have, yeah i'll have to give it a give it a shot yeah you you you'll be happy you did I, i'm always looking for more stand-up comedy though i love stand-up i'm bad at names too i still don't don't know a, a half of my Workers. <laughs> <laughs> how, long, how long have you worked there? Four years. Four years? <laughs> My only trick is that I have to immediately say somebody's name back to them, and that kind of like locks it in a little bit. That's not easy when every name is Kazakh's name. You think uh, Kazakhstani names are harder to remember? It's it's funny when you know English and Russian 
for example, their name is Kamshat. I don't get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. What did you just? What was his name? Does that mean something? Or I don't know how it's spelled, but I think he's. Uh, I think he's saying. Yeah, yeah. It's pronounced like that. Oh goodness. <laughs> um, there's a guy that uh, I can't remember what his first name was. I don't think that his first name. Well, actually, I think this is a, in like a reasonably common Indian Indian name, but it's spelled. Uh, it looks like it's spelled like Dick Shit, D I K S H I T. It's not. It's not actually pronounced that way, but um, I I, I want to say that the that the guy that his first name played into this somehow. This guy uh, Indian names are really tend to be really long. Um, right. Yeah. But but it might have been like like is and and like it started off with ass or something and abbreviated like in the system like ass stick shit or something like that like it was something weird i'll have to i'll have to see if i'll see if i can find that because i should still have uh i got i got a guy I passed a ticket to me about with from him and he was like you just got to promise not to laugh at his name so which I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have even thought about it, except when he said it, then I looked at it and I was like, just, it was, yeah. I was in a cemetery one time and I saw a gravestone and the name on it was Jackass. I thought that was bizarre. Dying wish to be forever known as. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you can find that somewhere in Chicago is where I saw it, I think. And then what, what else? Uh, oh, I, you know, I once met someone in, named Precious Roach. I thought that was an interesting one. <laughs> uh, I guess I've got to I have to filter now. Maybe this is not the way to do it. Uh, hmm. It used to be so easy to browse. Okay, I don't know what the hell was happening before. It's working now. This is probably not the way to do it, though. Um, you know what? This is going to take a while, and it will probably not be as interesting as the effort that I put in. So I'm just. Gonna stop. <laughs> oh man, that's like a lot of things in life. Yeah, <laughs> you just you know the key is to realize that before <laughs> before you dig too I'm deep. Extremely bad at that. <laughs> yeah. So it just happened long enough ago um, that I don't remember the exact search phrase that I'll need. I know who did. Uh, who told me? I don't know. It's Carl Worth. I don't know if you uh, you know oh. him. Ben. Yeah, I do. Not well, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I took over a ticket from him. <laughs> he was just like, promise not to laugh at his name. Um, the uh, so what about like uh, we haven't really talked about too much high end merch because I don't think any of us are particularly okay. Uh, so let's talk about wealthy, but the most notorious high end merch for a second. <laughs> and I mean that in every sense of the word notorious. Do you think you know what I'm going to talk about, Doug? I, I Metallica think I do. backstage pass. Nope. Nope. They were like going for five the, grand. The limited edition here. one of one Wu Tang uh, Clan yep. album that sold to Martin Shkreli. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. That is the holy sure. grail of merch. Well, may, I guess if you're into that. <laughs> I mean, for real. That's. Yeah. How much yeah. did it sell for? It was like three, three or like ten, or sorry, like twenty or thirty thousand, wasn't it? No, it was like a million. Oh wow! I Whoa. totally missed that mark. Yeah, he <laughs> bought it for like a million dollars, a limited edition one of one Wu Tang Clan album. Just an amazing thing, and he's like the most awful person. And I have always wondered what that album must sound like. Yeah. It probably just sounds like a Wu Tang album, uh, but not as big of a hit. <laughs> like, 
Yeah, I don't. There's another you gotta one. Figure, you got to figure if it was a hit, they would have pressed a lot more of that. <laughs> there is another album that I actually think is really neat, and I got to find it. Um, I wonder, so when uh, they uh, seized his assets, the uh, his lawyer said that the album was now probably worthless. I doubt that. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. He paid two million, apparently. So. Oh, two million, wow. Yeah. So I'm going to drop a link. Um, this album is by, have you ever heard of Steve Albini? I'm assuming you must sure. have. Yeah. So his band Shellac came out with this album. They self-released it and they only gave it to their friends. And there's a list of everybody they gave the album to on the front of the album. That's and, awesome. Oh, that's fun. And one of the people, or like three of the people that are on that list um, were in a band, and my dad worked with one of them. And it was a band that was signed to, I think, Touch and Go album. And now you're going to tell me your dad yeah. bought it from them. <laughs> no. But it's weird to know that this dude my dad knows has like this legendary album that is limited to like, you know, 50 or 100 copies. It's, yeah, I don't know. It's really. I think that's basically, most bands that I collect are limited to like 100 so they copies. Didn't want, they didn't want anybody else to hear this album. So they put everybody's name that they gave it to on the front and then they hand circled the person that they gave it to. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So if they ever found the album. So this is a similar sort of thing. Um, not, not exactly the same, but uh, I think they sent out just copies to like, yeah, a few of the 25 copies were sent, were shipped to prominent fans in the online community. So the, yeah, they just pressed oh. 25. So who did it first? Shellac did it first. Well, they're both, Shellac... from, they're both from Chicago too, which is interesting because I think Steve Albini was like a engineer on one of Smashing Pumpkins albums. See, he was a he engineered a lot of nineties, late eighties, nineties. His big stuff. thing, and man, talk about your digression of digression. I was just reading about him yesterday about. Uh, so he his big thing band. is he charges the same rate for every band that he does work for. Whether they're like a little band or like a huge band. And he has a very specific way of recording. And like when you kind of start paying attention to it, you can sort of tell the albums that he recorded. And he's a big analog tape guy. And his albums all sound very dry. Like there's not really any added reverb. It's just room reverb. But he, like you can tell the Steve Albini album. And Neurosis, who's generally like a really heavily produced band, have a couple albums that he produced and they sound totally different than the rest of their catalog. And I always think that's really cool. Uh, excuse me. Anyway. All right. I'm done talking about Steve Elvini. Check out his work though. He's awesome. <laughs> I'm sure people have, even yeah. if they didn't realize it. So He's also uh, a huge smart ass. Like if you read interviews with him, he comes across like the biggest asshole, but like he's right about what he's talking about. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah, the uh, the story between the uh, the Shellac album and the Smashing Pumpkins album is quite a bit different um, into why that they went that route. But uh, but yeah, they may very well have been, or Billy may have been um, inspired by by that to just do that. But what's interesting about this Machina too is that you know they released it online, or interesting to me. Um, is they released it online under um well they, they they just told people to do what they want with it so uh people started like i don't know if it's called ripping with a with a vinyl and uh but whatever they were, were digitally they were digitizing the vinyl and uh they would put it up on online and so um you can hear like the different um recordings of the vinyl that have been digitized like there's differences so you can get like the you know the joe smith version versus the you know karen gustav version you know like the, like you can like there's different uh different rips i'm just gonna call them rips i don't know if that's technically right but uh but yeah so there's there's like this pumpkins album that's 
under Creative Commons. And it's like got a bunch of tracks on it. I guess it's got um, 25 tracks, depending on how you count. Because it's a, it's, it's got like EPs along with like a, a LP. Um, but yeah. What the point of making album of more than ten tracks? Um, you know, if you have a story to tell and you need more than ten tracks to do it. I mean I always like getting double albums or <laughs> that's fun. What I don't like is when I get an album and one side's blank. That bums me out. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean if you're gonna take the time to press it, press both sides. I mean, how much more can that possibly cost? Yeah, I, I have no idea. I guess that's why it always bums me out. Like yesterday, uh, my wife you print the same the album on both sides. Me and... Yeah, that way there's not a wrong side. Oh, so I think oh, yeah. I mentioned this before, but I had a copy of Flair's Rain and Blood on cassette, and it was short enough that it fit on one side of the cassette, so it was just the other side. <laughs> so you just flip it over and it would be the same on both sides. They should just do that. Yeah, but I awesome. suppose etching costs money, so they don't. Yeah. But how much more, I mean, like, how much does the etching cost? You've already no, paid for the vinyl. And the... I would assume they can use a simpler stamp mm. if it's only one-sided. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. There's and then just a blank. Font sites when you can press your music on vinyl. It's curate and I want uh, it on vinyl. I don't know why that I've been like when I've been looking stuff up, I've been moving the um, moving the zoom out of the way, but I have two monitors, so. Um, how easy is this to see the curates? So th this is a uh, crowdfunding, it looks like. Yeah. So how how does this work? So you make you're making project of your music, and somebody is buying, and when your project is done, then uh, pressing is start. So, so they don't, they don't know how much it's going to be until it's done because they don't know if it's going to have to be on two sides. No, no, no. Oh, there is price. Okay. I'm trying to find my project. So my album was sold for fifteen dollars. So if you if you buy that vinyl, but project is not finished you you're getting your money back oh oh i see what you're saying yeah oh so it's like kickstarter for albums is that yeah 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 so if you if you only do one side then you can you can sell it for cheaper basically when you do this you can do whatever you want you will walk one track on each side. <laughs> <laughs> so how does, what does it cost as far as, um, you know, for, to the musician, like what's the cut? That's what, that's what I, I'm trying to figure out, like, the, like if there's any incentive to put it all on one side versus the other. On curates? Yeah, yeah, on curates. There, they have some person from purchase, but I don't know where to find it. Uh. Sorry if it's kind of loud on my side. I can <laughs> I either... say your mic, mic is picking up a lot. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. My son's having a Hot Wheels festival over here. Oh, oh, that's right. I think at one point you showed like this crazy track that he has. Yeah, it's nuts. It's like 
I don't know. It's one, two, three, four, five stories with a loop and, and a jump. It's nuts. Selling CD. I don't know. It's kind of. I just came up when I was looking for um, for stuff, and it's local to me and Ben anyway. But CDs are kind of boring. <laughs> but it is what it is. I mean, I searched for musicians selling masks, but um, I couldn't. I didn't see when I the article that I shared a while back. But there, are, there are a few different ones out there. Face masks just became the hottest music merch of 2020. This was actually like a month ago, but <laughs> that's the article headline. Um, so I am going to have to go, um, which means the recording will end. Um, does anybody? Yeah, want I think to... I'm actually going to drop two and grab some lunch. Okay. So um, it's been real. Yeah, yeah. Does anybody... that's that's fun with, that you're going to have lunch when I'm going to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's how time works in planet Earth. Yeah, so, time and uh, future. Right. Uh, all right. <laughs> I will um try to get the uh, the voting out. Might have to work with it. Um, you know, like I had some topics, but maybe we should change them up, make them more topical for the voting sure. for next week. But, um, hey, what do you guys think about having like a certain structure to these things so we're not just winging it, I guess? I'll let Doug be the master of ceremonies. I avoid structure. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Sure. Uh, but I'm I mean, fine with, if Doug wants to lead, I'm fine with following. Yeah, I just, so, I mean, I'm not I guess, a structure person. I guess, I guess the problem is um, if I'm going to be in charge of that is like there is zero chance. Well, it's not zero chance, but very little chance that like I will be on these calls in July um so somebody else will have to take over that i nominate but, caleb yeah i'm happy to do it in june though we can figure something out but uh i do have to go so uh what i'll do is i'll let's talk about that on the um okay. on the facebook group caleb and then maybe some other people can chime in okay all right later all right all right peace later folks Bye. Bye.